Good afternoon, Dunlo. Welcome to the 2020 trials, adjourned for two years. First of all, just a few house calls, first, or house rules, first of all. There are no fire alarm testings scheduled for this afternoon. The main reason being, we don't have any fire alarms. But if it is a problem, we have my honourable stewards at the end, on both sides, who will show you the exit quickly. And I think you'll be able to find the judge quickly. He'll go the first one out. Have you all got your programmes? Have you seen the judge's picture? I thought that there's a jury that was supposed to be young. You look at the judge, he looks about 15. And I think those that selected him should have gone to one of our sponsors before they uh, chose who he was. But never mind. Anyway, we will get on in a minute and hopefully we'll have a good afternoon if it's not too hot. I think there will be water available if anyone wants it, won't there? There we are. If anyone feels the urgent need for a bottle of water, just put your hand up. The other thing I have to say that is any mobile phones that are heard may be collected from the doctor's pond afterwards. <laughs> Enjoy the afternoon. Welcome to the 2022 Dunmo Fleet Trials with Judge Daniel Pitt presiding. Let's hope he does a better job than he did this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, terrific this morning, thank you very much. Uh, it's now my second trial. The issue is from this morning we had the uh, claims and the claims didn't win. But that's nothing to do with the judge, is it? That's to do with the jury. Pray silence for the court chaplain. The power. Let us all pray. The last time we met, the jury found for the bacon. It's fair to say this left us all shaken. Now two new couples who once tied the knot Today of their marriage they tell us the lot. We pray for them whatever they share. May the jury be kinder and ever so fair. Whatever judgment may fall, O oh Father above, increase in us all our hearts of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. But love like that is hard to find. So give us eyes that we may see the wonder of what love can be. Love that 
stands the test of years. Love that hopes and perseveres. Love that rejoices in the truth and lasts well beyond our fading youth. May we see that love today, present in those couples who come our way, that loving each other as they ought, they might at last find favour with this court. Amen. All the jury members present, nearly, <laughs> nearly, <laughs> nearly. We are one missing at the last count. One missing. I don't know whether we can manage, judge, can we, or can we proceed? Just remind me how many uh, reserved jur- jurors we have. None. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were all sent home after the first trial. <laughs> 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 That's what happens, isn't it? <laughs> Were there the option of, of um, uh, having substitute jurors? It'd certainly be something to uh, consider, though. I am content uh, for my first decision of this trial that 11 jurors, fair and true, uh, will uh, give a fair judgment uh, in this matter. The, the matter can proceed with 11 jurors. Oh, any other objections? There is, I'm afraid. Uh, right. We started about ten minutes later. Oh, I, I know, I know. <laughs> it, it'll just take the half mass. Right. <laughs> um, uh, it has become to my attention, and, and your lordship will find this quite scandalous. Two things. Um, the first is it's rumoured there may be a vegetarian in the jury. <laughs> Surely not. Um, now. I may have benefited from said vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, I thought to bring it to, 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 to your attention. The second um, is the jury may have been drinking at lunchtime. <laughs> well, my, my lord, if I could reply as I represent the bacon, you may recall this morning I made some disparaging comments about vegans. <laughs> On behalf of the bacon, I now say that I was wrong. <laughs> um, as many vegetarians as possible, please. Uh, as regards them drinking, the Dunmo Flitch Trials Committee has spent six years to find six maidens in Essex. <laughs> I mean, Wait for it. <laughs> I mean, they've got to be sober as well. <laughs> Besides, uh, uh, two uh, points that are raised there. The issue in terms of uh, a vegetarian juror is something I applaud. People say that Dunmo is not the most diverse place. Well, here we are, meat eaters and vegetarians as well. <laughs> I mean, a, balanced, a balanced jury there. I applaud, I applaud that. And in respect to the drinking, it really is the only way to be able to get through the trial. <laughs> 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 now, is the trend jury in? Yes, thank you. Right. Members of the jury, when I call your name, would you please stand? Liz Aspinall, Sophie Bottom, Izzy Gower, Abby Cartlins, Cindy Bo Puddy, Sky Wilson, Richard Aspinall, Eli Haynes, Ben Houghton, Harry O'Dwyer, and Patrick Whelan. Pray silence in court while the jury are sworn in. If you'd all raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I, as a member of this jury, jury, do make oath that I will well and truly try try all such persons persons as shall this day day make claim to the bacon of Dunlow. And true verdicts give according to the evidence. Have you appointed a foreman? Yes, sir, I'm the foreman. Brilliant, thank you very much indeed. You may sit down. Who appears to the plaintiffs? Oh, that's me. Well, one of you must be. Oh, 
Uh, I am uh, Stephen Bougeau, and uh, alongside me is uh, my, uh, what's the word? Le- very learned friend. Very learned friend. Very, friend. friend. very smart and learned friend, Ian Daniels. Mm-hmm. And who appears to the bacon? Uh, I appear for the claimant, Swallow. My name's Tim Clark, yeah. Queen's Council. Oh, very good. Currently on strike. Oh, I'm for the bacon again. We are for the bacon. We are for the bacon. I'm for the peer for the donors of the bacon, my lord, with my learned friend, Sadie Nine. Thank you. Well, I think we need some claimants, don't we? We call some claimants. Please, uh, Usher. I need their names. Michael, Mike, and Zanna O'Reilly. Mr. and Mrs. O'Reilly. They're not Irish, right? See, there is a claim that's come, come up. There's people waving, waving their programs around their faces. Have a think about the judge. Oh, yeah, the judge is sweating away under this uh, wig, sweating more than that pig out there. I have to comment, Your Honour, that we are all in our finery, and he comes in short. <laughs> <laughs> Not to a blame him. Right, raise your right hand, both of you. Read off the card, ready? I swear that the evidence I shall give. I swear that the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. According to the custom of this ancient court. According to the custom of this ancient court. Well done. <laughs> They're all yours, my lord. This will be there. Members of the jury, I present to you Zana and Michael. I really love young dream. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, first of all, uh, you're from Dumbo? We are. We live just down in Church End, yeah. Fantastic. And you've got no plans to move to Norfolk or anywhere like that? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't here for the first trial, week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure when I do have this. Uh, but the, 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 the bacon will be staying in Dumbo when you win it. Well, we'll be eating it today, obviously. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so would you like to tell us a little bit about how uh, you met? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um... Zana is a good friend of my cousin. They study at oh. uh, Oxford University together. Um, and I met at Zana at my cousin's wedding. Um, yeah. yeah, do you we want to s- the actual... We spotted each other, but yeah. we were too shy to say anything. But at the end of the night, hot, sweaty Ashmolean Museum, uh, into the Cayley, a drunken lady in a hat grabbed me as I walked past and said, why are you talking to this one? And she'd been saying to Mike, why are you not talking to any of the ladies? And I'd just come out of the yeah. toilets, but the hand dryer wasn't working, so my hands were wet. <laughs> so the first thing I said to Mike was... I wonder if you could slow down with your reply. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the judge is a little hard of hearing. <laughs> <laughs> just very excited. Very excited. Yeah. Um, and I said, it's not we, it's just water. <laughs> and I think in that moment, I was sort of quite aware of how awkward that was and felt a kind of kinship and... Fumbled my way through some kind of answer as well. And we never looked. Yeah. I definitely wasn't speaking to the dr- old drunken lady, <laughs> you know. And then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, now this is what love is: overcoming wet hands on the first meet. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you uh, you were together, and then talk about your pr- the proposal because you actually had more than one. That's how deeply in love you are. One, one wasn't enough. Yeah, right. yeah. So the the first was uh, the proper proposal. Um, we went for it. We had a little Christmas uh, to ourselves before going to our first families for Christmas. Um, I had uh, that week broken a ball that I hadn't realised was very precious to Anna. Um, so I'd attempted to fix it. Uh, I put it in my pocket. Uh, we went for a nice sort of wintry walk, found a hilltop. Um, I put the ring in the ball with the intention of taking that out and yeah, presenting both together. Um, and you said, Zana, I've got something very yeah. important to show you. On a I hilltop. Thought, oh, could it be? Could yeah. it be? And then he looked at me with a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, what? okay. Um, yeah, the ring had sort of, because I was wearing a thick coat, the ring had kind of like found its way to the bottom of it. And I was like, there's, there's, there's more, there is more. Um, managed to get it out. It was a very nice proposal. The sun just kind of broke through some of the clouds as well, which was a bit, which was quite sweet. Um, and then the moment was ruined by a couple of farm lads tearing around the corner on a, on a 
uh, quad bikes. Nearly so, runs over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, this is what real love is. Uh, wet hands, broken balls, uh, and uh, quad bikes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you had a second proposal. You did it, you, you did yeah. it all over again. A little one when I was at my worst, uh, in a grotty bathroom in our old cottage in Kent, smashing the edge of a tooth. Thing off. I don't remember. Yeah, I was a bit hormonal and a bit all over the shop. Oh. And I turned round and you were there on one, one knee saying, I love you even when you like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, if you like this, then I'll just do it. Now, you signed up to do the Dominic Flick Charles uh, free COVID and your life has significantly changed. You've got an addition to the, to the loving family. We do. Yeah. We've got yeah. a little girl, 19 months old. She had a baby during COVID. I think that deserves yeah. a round of applause. Yeah. As well as doing 10 Zoom quizzes a week, they were also raising a child. Uh, (laughs) Incredible. Uh, And uh, uh, and, and, and Danny, you actually are uh, a neurologist that specialises in sleep deprivation. Has this come in handy with being a a new mum? Yeah, I'm doing a PhD in sleep deprivation at the moment, so yes, I'm now fully versed in sleep deprivation. Personally and professionally, I like to confirm it's very bad for you. Uh, now, of course, love isn't always plain sailing, and you have had uh, some difficulties uh, that you've overcome because you're so in love and so strong. Uh, Mike, do you want to tell us a few of the issues that Zana's uh, posed you recently? <laughs> oh, well, it depends if they're serious issues or comical issues. Um, I think uh, one of the, well, let's say, one of some of the ones that sort of stand out in my mind. Um, yeah, I, you, you smashed my car up. Um, <laughs> and the, you know, you said you hadn't had any coffee. Which was, yeah, I can't drive that coffee. Yeah, and I found yeah, so. the bollard. <laughs> uh, 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 poured hot tea in your shoes yeah. the first day we moved in together. Flick, oh yeah, flicks chilli in my eye on my birthday. On your thirtieth. <laughs> on my thirtieth, so it's a big one. Don't forget the dasher and tritus. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which then um, thought was cholera, but we came to the conclusion probably hasn't been. Oh, that was just the first, the first time you met. Oh, the parents. first one. Yeah, there's been multiple um, stomach bugs as a result of yeah. getting a um, The first time you were meeting my parents, yeah. you just redecorated their bathrooms. You were trying to make sure the question. Yeah, and yeah. And I, I brought a nasty hospital bug back. And yeah, yeah. perks of um, being being with somebody who works in a hospital. <laughs> 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 Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I brought those up. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think the point I was trying to demonstrate is that love isn't always plain sailing and they, they've overcome what is quite significant. Uh, <laughs> more than I anticipated, actually. Uh, but the, uh, look, they're still smiling. Look how happy they are. And um, please forget what they just said. Uh, uh, and uh, finally, you do have some shared hobbies and uh, passions that bring you together that don't involve any kind of illnesses or... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris, the two man frisbee thing. Yeah. Two wo- man woman frisbee thing. Yeah, we're, we're sort of out of all these 40 people, so before babies, we had lots of things in common. Now we share childcare, childcare, and childcare. Yeah, yeah. I think my climbing equipment's been covered for a couple of years now. It hasn't seen the light of day for a while. Yeah. Um, I will not ask any further questions in case I incriminate myself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, bacon, right? We're bacon. So, Mr. and Mrs. O'Reilly, if that is your real name, <laughs> <laughs> Never just in name. preparation for this august court, you swore and signed statements which uh, have been provided to council. May I read from it, my lord? You, you may. You may. Met. This is how they describe how they met as a couple. They met because Mike is the cousin of Zanna's uni friend and was a bridesmaid at her wedding in 2014. Zanna, what was Mike's bridesmaid dress like? (laughs) (laughs) No, I was the bridesmaid, and actually my friend is a a man, so... And you've got a... Doctorate, you say? (laughs) (laughs) Not yet. Well, it's doctor's handwriting, I imagine. (laughs) Right, what it says here is after this... You sent Mike a message by text. And he replied sweetly in a way that implied he wasn't interested. Mike, what did you say in that text? Um, if I remember correctly, it was... Yeah, yeah, I was trying to sort of be quite sort of humble, because you'd said, uh, anyone who is related to my friend Alex, 
must be really nice. And I was like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm nothing on them. They're trying to be humble, but that... Not that compared was, to my cousin. Yeah. And, and then a couple of days later, she hadn't replied, so I asked one of my housemates, I was like, well, just read this and let me know what you think. And they were just like, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> write her another message. <laughs> and did you have to have that message written for you? Um, no, 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 it dictated, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to identify what a text is? Yeah, by all it's, it's a method of communication used by the young. Now, the first engagement. It says that you had to rummage in your pocket immediately before you proposed. Later in the statement, it says that one of the difficulties you face is Mike's insatiable appetite. <laughs> Sorry, I should read on. He eats them out of house and home. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I entirely misunderstood. <laughs> it said you went down on one knee, Zana said yes, and then they ne- nearly got run over by a tractor driving up the lane. Was the farmer married? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, uh, he's going too fast to stop. Ah, I see. And another difficulty was being chased by a moose in Sweden. Yeah, he did. Terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Was the moose married? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, this difficulty is claimed in the statement. Mike also electrocuted Zana during labour by messing with the controls of her TENS machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's good that now everyone in Dunmore knows that. It's, it's, yeah. it's a different kind of pain. It was a relief in that sense. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's because, <laughs> because um, you'd communicate to the midwife that uh, you wanted to go upstairs and they were kind of being a bit lazy I was about screaming it. for an epidural. It had to go for. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you thought and they weren't you shouldn't do the job. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't getting on with it. So I tried to, as Zana was getting up off the bed, I was trying to help and things got caught. And the next thing I know, she's shouting, you're electrocuting me. <laughs> um, but we, we communicated and got our way through it. Managed to get it back working again. Mm-hmm. Um, so... He's dressed up as a bridesmaid. He has to have text dictated to him. He's insatiable. <laughs> Rummages in his pockets before producing unexpected items on hillsides. <laughs> He's driven at by farmers and tractors and by insatiable... What's the plural of moose? Meese? <laughs> Mooses. Is that a fair description of your relationship? You've missed out several things. <laughs> <laughs> I've no further questions. Uh, and just before we have the uh, closing speeches, uh, we, uh, of course, heard in terms of the uh, uh, sleep deprivation work, if you're hearing from Mr. Clark and his questions, I thought that would be a pretty good cure uh, for the issue of the sleep uh, deprivation. Would you agree with that? I didn't, I didn't go there. <laughs> There's children in the room. And we've heard a lot about, uh, and unusually, I'm very, very pleased to see, the wife's occupation. You heard anything in terms of the husband's occupation? Mr. Ryan, how do you work? <laughs> uh, well, it depends if you call artists a job. Um, yeah, I do. I work uh, as a scenic artist for the Royal Opera House, uh, so we produce um, built scenery and painted backdrops of ballet and opera. <laughs> Thank you. Now, who will... Who is nine? So a speech for the bacon. Thank you, my lord. Thank you very much indeed, my, my council. Um, Mr. Tim Clark, QC Silk. <laughs> on strike. Yeah. On strike. Comment. We're on strike at the moment. Well, well, they're they're on strike. At the moment. Yeah. Yes. That's why he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody needs a cheap silk? To <laughs> well, it's relatively inexpensive. And I myself um, have silk, <laughs> which I have changed because it's got rather hot. <laughs> <laughs> Never, never laugh at your own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll roll it out. Uh, it's really uncomfortable. Hello, thank you. So let me just reiterate, if I may, and obviously I'm not questioning you, but I am questioning the meeting of this young couple. They met at a wedding. They didn't actually meet. They were, they were. L- 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 launched upon by an old lady who was drunk in a funny hat. Now, I don't remember being at that wedding. (laughs) (laughs) 
I have no recollection, my lord. I'd like it to go down in whatever you write down there. <laughs> no recollection at all. And you had wet hands. I was very pleased to read that it was you, Zana, who had wet hands and not Mike, because maybe that shape wouldn't be there. <laughs> Me know with all you gentlemen. Now, <laughs> I'd just like to say to, to our jury, who are young, beautiful, intelligent, and I know that our jury are the type of young people who will vote for Love Island. And, <laughs> and I just want to ingratiate myself with you because these people, they don't deserve a flitch. They probably don't even know what a flitch is. They come here. They're not. They're not homegrown from Dunmo. You've heard their accents. Where are they from? I'm very sorry, but when I saw Michael, and I'm sorry for calling you Mike earlier, when I saw Michael and he spoke about a bowl, he didn't say bowl. He said bowl. <laughs> Well, I'm. <laughs> and she's insatiable, which isn't normal in Dumbo. <laughs> and finally, because we're all hot and bothered, and my silk's need changing again. Anyway, <laughs> that jack gag is now out. And finally, I'd like to think about this filling his shoes with hot tea on a day they moved in together. What type of woman <laughs> fills a man's shoes with hot tea? <laughs> well, actually, I've done it a few times, but anyway, don't mention that. So I'm arguing for that flitch. It shouldn't go to this young couple. What are they going to do with it? A couple of burgers and that's it. Are they going to recycle it? Probably not. They're not born in Dumbo, so who are they going to give it to? I'm arguing for the flitch. I think the flitch should stay. I think they should get their bit of gammon, and that's it. And I give that to you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that's the case for the bacon. But what's the case for the payments? Thank you, my lord. Uh, members of the jury, what a load of nonsense. What a load of nonsense. This is love's slightly damp young dream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to the wig. Uh, um, you will know, um, after the first trial, members of the jury, that you are a, a fantastic jury. One that listens to sensible and cogent arguments, uh, and not, for example, for one of my learned friends talking about himself for ten minutes uh, and, and criticising others, and, uh, and you won't get that from me, uh, nor will you get me bashing the bishop. Uh, uh, <laughs> You're going to hear me talk, members of the jury. You're going to hear me talk about the evidence. Let's get down to it. Hard facts. You know, some of us, some of us would appreciate the attention of drunk elderly ladies. <laughs> Saracen's Bar, 8 o'clock. <laughs> Come as you are. Um, and some of us appreciate modern love. Real love. Real love's not a fairy tale. My own friend was pointing out, real love is about shaking hands with your future wife when they're covered in we. <laughs> <laughs> it is about uh, your husband electrocuting you uh, at one of the most important times in your life. Uh, and it is about um, breaking her... Well, I read it as bowel. But uh, there's definitely a bowl, isn't it? <laughs> Breaking her bowl uh, as you uh, are about to, um, about to propose to her. And, and that's what it's about, isn't it? And you, members of the jury, as, as young people, will understand that. A and you will understand that perhaps, you know, an ill-thought-out text message, which you send whilst drunk, 
perhaps on a train home um, from a work event. Uh, um, <laughs> even <laughs> they weren't going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm possibly to the wrong, wrong person. I don't know. Uh, um, but you know, you will appreciate, members of the jury, that that is young dream of, of love. Uh, and as you start, as you must have uh, had done, the, these, these trials being slightly delayed, uh, upon the journey into love's intimate embrace, um, you will understand that that journey has its bumps and its curves uh, 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 and its quad bikes and tractors all along the way. Uh, and you will think on that at the end of these trials, when you're a bit peckish, and when you're thinking, yes, I wonder what's for dinner. The O'Reilly's have got bacon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And so it falls for the judge to sum up for the jury. I have done this once so far. I thought fairly, quite successfully, and subtly guiding the jury in one particular direction, but in being neutral uh, throughout. The previous claimants, 42 years of marriage. 42 years of marriage, long time. Maybe you can see some issues, whether you... you didn't wish to be married at some point in those 42 years. We bring to you now, members of the jury, not even four years of marriage. Uh, married on the 11th of August 2018, so coming up to under uh, um, almost uh, four years. But, of course, it would have been two years had we had our trial on the date. And at that point, uh, we had no children of the family at all. Now we have around 19 months old. Now, the sleep deprivation thing, you here as the members of the, in the public gallery here watching this trial will know a young baby and sleep deprivation if anything is going to give you the tension for a couple and try any issues with it is going to be a baby stroke toddler at that age and that in terms they say to you we are happily married and we have never wished ourselves unwed that you will form your views in terms of the happiness from the witness box, but taking that on is, I, you can take judicial, I can take judicial notice, uh, is a tricky time uh, for anyone. So we have, you may think, a balanced relationship with both parties there working. Uh, I'm pleased to see that what came out later uh, was, does the husband work here rather than the other way around? There's no need nowadays in modern relationships. Let's have the man, a <coughs> homemaker. Let's have uh, um, whatever works uh, here. But both parties working, and they're as a scenic artist in the Royal Opera House. And you might think that the claimants have painted for you the picture of a happily married couple. You might find with the Thames machine that it shows the spark of romance <laughs> and love. I've <laughs> worked very hard, worked very hard, very hard on, on this. And, and you, might, you might find that you are compelled to find for this, this couple for the claimants. But it's my role as the judge just to set out the summary in an entirely neutral way and for you uh, to come back and this time uh, make the decision that is once again a fair one that might be slightly different in the answer that you give uh, to the uh, uh, about it. But that's ultimately, members of the jury, it's for you. <laughs> Now, members of the jury, will now retire to consider your verdict. Please, usher, summon oh, the jury keeper. I thought never get around to that. <laughs> summon the jury makers, of oh, jury keepers. In the old days, those that can remember, you used to have Essex police officers do the jury looking. And we only ever needed one. <laughs> But since there are no police in Essex anymore, <laughs> we have to go to the Metropolitan Police. So we have one Metropolitan Police and, I hate to say it, a special constable. <laughs> right, so raise your right hands 
and say after me, I declare and make solemn oath that I will convey this jury to a place of safety where they may consider the evidence given and give their verdict without let or hindrance from anyone else around. They're dropping off to sleep. In accordance with the ancient fits law. Off you go. You do one at the front, one at the back, just to make them safe. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> this morning they both went in the back, so they're learning. <laughs> you like to follow the judge out when you go, all right? All right. down again. Pray silence in court. <laughs> Members of the jury, are you agreed upon your verdict? How say you? For the claimants or for the donors for the bacon? And is that a verdict of you all? Judgment for the claimants. I have to say that although it's incredibly hot in here and I've been sweating, that level of sweat has been increased while I was waiting for the uh, jury to <laughs> come back with their, with their decision, which they may, um, and uh, I have to say, uh, now, to the claimants, by the verdict of the jury, According to ancient custom, you have been adjudged worthy to take the prescribed oath and receive the much coveted award of a whole flitch of bacon. <laughs> The order of this court is that you will be taken to a public place where you will be required to take the said oath, kneeling the while on pointed stones. This done, it will give me much pleasure to pass sentence on you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That'll teach him to wear shorts, won't it? <laughs> But why would we have just one trial in the sweltering heat <laughs> in July when we can have two? <laughs> Mr. Usher? Oh. And we have some more claimants. Have you got any names? <laughs> I, I do. Uh, Desmond and Minette Carter. Gosh, you could have told me what I was well, I, <laughs> <laughs> you're, a, you're a young, agile man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Carter, come along. <laughs> well done, this way. Oh. Is my, as uh, the carters come in, that's my dad. My dad there in the wheelchair there with his pair of Dan. <laughs> and Dan's doing a terrific job of looking after him. So if I'm allowed to take advantage of my judicial position by giving a name check, then I've just done that. <laughs> Can you see over the top of this one? Can you see all right? Yeah. If you know, we put you on the stand. I think oh. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, raise your right hands and say after me. I swear that the evidence I shall give. I swear that I the swear evidence, that I, the evidence give. I shall give. Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Will be the truth. The truth. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing, and nothing but, but the, the truth. truth. According to the custom. According, According to, the to the custom of this ancient court. Of this, this ancient, ancient court. court. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be a long afternoon. <laughs> now, in this trial, who appears for the claimants? Well, I appear for the claimants, my lord, alongside my learned friend, Steve Fugere. And who appears for the bacon? One of you. I appear for the bacon, my lord, along with my very learned friend, Mr. Ian Daniels. Right. Mr. Clark, could you give the court your name, please? Desmond Carter. Minette Carter. Now, uh, you're not from round here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry about my accent. Could, 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 could you tell the jury and my lord where you live? We live in Michigan in the U.S. Right, Desmond, that you're a vegan? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> is it right, Minette, you're a vegetarian? <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> I've lost the first two of these things. <laughs> and they're going to be two Yanks who don't eat meat, so I'm going to have to say the jury to give <laughs> All right. You don't get given these gowns for nothing. Let's go. <laughs> right. Fact number one. Important. What day did you get married on? July 8th, 2019. So the 8th of July, 2019. So a year and a day after that would be what? July 9th, 2020. So why did you choose to get married on the 8th of July, 2019, this couple from Michigan... United States. Oh, we uh, did that so that we could participate, actually. That's why we chose it. (laughs) 
And but for COVID, that would have been just a brilliant opening line. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, all of us, two years later. <laughs> so how did you find out about the Dunmo Flitch trials? Uh, through a uh, Wikipedia rabbit hole, I guess, if you call it. <laughs> So, um, Keith Flint from Prodigy had moved here, I guess, and um, he had passed in February of 2019, and so um, we were looking for a date, and uh, we went down, I went down the Wikipedia, like, uh, rabbit hole, and I found out about Fred Dunmo, and then from that, I found the Flitch trials. So, from the death of someone who was a resident here, you found out about these trials, chose your wedding date so that you could participate a year and a day later. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> and you've waited two years and you've flown over here to the United States so that you can appear here and appeal for some somewhat inedible bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Where, where, uh, Minette, did you meet? Um, we met at a birthday party of a mutual friend who was his roommate at the time, so at the house he was living in. And uh, was he there at the start of the party? Um, no, I was already at the party um, when he came home from work around midnight. Um, and we kind of made eye contact all the way across the house and then ended up talking all night. Oh, there you are. And how long after that did you become engaged? Um, <laughs> it was five years. Five years from meeting you got engaged. Yeah. And where... Was it? And tell us about that then, please. So, um, throughout our relationship, we traveled to Canada just to kind of like hang out and stuff. And uh, one year, uh, I decided to buy a ring and hide it from, hide that fact from her. And we went to Toronto, and uh, we were sitting on this porch in this like uh, park, um, Trinity Bellwood Park. I think a it bench. Is. Yeah, bench. Yeah. <laughs> what did I say? No. Sorry. Oh, yeah, on a bench. And. Uh, <laughs> Behind us, there were like cups um, shaped into a heart, and so what I did was uh, I kind of just um, took out the ring and like kind of handed it to her while you were sitting there, and it's, you know I said, "Here, I got something for you." And then eventually, like uh, I think you know, I said, "Are you asking me to marry you?" <laughs> and uh, I didn't actually ask her, but you know she got the idea. So. <laughs> And you got married, as you told us, on the 8th of July, 2019. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Desmond, what do you do for work? Uh, I'm an engineer for a uh, car company, I guess. Yeah, so. Okay, well, Michigan. They make some cars. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Minette, what do you do? Um, I'm a merchandiser for a mattress retailer. Okay, I think I know what that is. A merchandiser, so someone who, who's involved in sales, is that right? Basically, yeah. And it says here that your hobbies and activities are cooking, if you can call it that, vegan meals. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, there's a comma, cooking, comma, vegan meals. <laughs> <laughs> Taking long walks around the city. Which, which city is that now? Depends on where we are. Oh, well, right now it's Berkeley, actually. Well, not right now, but you know. No, no, no. Usually. <laughs> they're from Essex, but they're not Aslo. <laughs> <laughs> Bike riding and listening to Up All Night. Um, my lord, I understand that that's some sort of modern music. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's on Radio 5 with uh, Dalton Adebayo. It's like a, you know, BBC thing. Right. You don't hear it. <laughs> As long as you're well briefed. I've never heard a question on this. <laughs> yeah, my, my mic is gone. I think they've got fed up with me, actually. Thank you very much indeed to my learned friend for basically doing the job for me. <laughs> Two people from America who don't eat meat. <laughs> And there we go. And I wonder, my lord, if I may take it, as you gave a lovely name check to your lovely dad who's with us, if I could just mention my two sisters, Diane and Joanne. They're not. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's not, it's not um, a question of naming random people in your family. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad was literally here. So, uh, <laughs>
But, uh, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, yeah. Anyway. What about your dog's names? Are they? Yeah. <laughs> Tiger Lily. Yep. Janice. Al, um, he's out there. So, yep. anyway. Anyway, have you, anyone who knows me? <laughs> Um, and Dr. Nadabai, a good friend of mine, I'm very pleased that you listen to him, he's a, he's a great listener and all that, but my question is, why do you need a flitch? I mean, I read on here, I read on here that you've had tattoos, you had them on your honeymoon in Toronto, and I wonder, could you tell our learned friends what they're tattoos of? Uh, they're tattoos of artichokes. <laughs> I really don't have to do anything, do I? <laughs> oh, you, do you have a fetish with vegetables? I'm just, I'm just wondering, do you have any other tattoos of a carrot or a potato? Or no. <laughs> may I, <laughs> I may ask you to prove that later. Um, <laughs> What will you actually do with a flitch of bacon? I mean, I don't know if they do Linda McCartney flitches. Or <laughs> that's what we have in this country. I'm not sure. Well, have you have you come up with something that you will do for this? No. Uh, we were thinking of regifting it back to the town, actually. Yeah. <laughs> very noble. Very noble. Yes, all right. Let's move on rather quickly, shall we? <laughs> you met at a party, you say, and you were there much later. Desmond, you came in later, and Lynette was there. And um, may I ask, were there any substances at this party going on at the time? I mean, I, I don't know, young people. So that substances, Milad, that's the sort of thing that goes on in these places, I believe. But um, you were there, and you bumped into each other, and you eventually got engaged, and I love to, I re read here that you like to typically walk aimlessly around while exploring. <laughs> it just makes me wonder, wh where are your heads at? <laughs> <laughs> typically where they normally sit. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, all right, they're doing rather well, aren't they? Anyway, there we go. That's why I don't normally wear this. Anyway, so you handed her a ring without saying anything, and she just guessed that you're going to be married. Now, that may, Jury, you may think, oh, how sweet. Others may say, what? What was sort of, you, you just guessed that he was, sometimes I have a cup of tea put down me, but I don't immediately think he wants to marry me. <laughs> it's, it's interesting conversations. When you go back to America, what is the biggest thing you will take back with you, apart from the flitch? What <laughs> about this day? Um, I guess the um, atmosphere of the lovely town. We'll try to advertise as well for you if you want. <laughs> I, I don't think we need any more Americans coming out of here. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. I don't think I need to, but I have some re-examination. Of course. Um, now, you recall that you took an oath in front of Roger the Bishop. By the way, that's his name, not an instruction. <laughs> <laughs> there was one question that I perhaps should have asked. Have you wished in the last three years in a day that you've ever been unmarried? Never. Or, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and before, uh, before we hear the speeches, I've got a question as well. In terms of eating and your meals together, <laughs> do you eat them together or apart? We almost always eat together. We like to cook our dinners together and enjoy them together. And I read there from your, your statement that you make, make sure we eat together as a couple, no matter how late it is. 
that one of us gets back. Is that right? It is. I've worked some jobs where I had to work later into the evening, but we usually wait together to eat dinner. Let's hear some speeches. <laughs> For the bacon. Yes. Yes, my lord. Um, before I start, my lord, um, I'm just going to say um, to our lovely audience, if you want to shout out, five quid back of the tent afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be clear, shout out. Okay. Members of the jury, um, I put my faith in you two times. And two times uh, you've come back uh, and found it in, in, in our favour. Uh, um, and uh, uh, we thank you for that. And that's a, a, a marvellous thing. And I'm going to say to you today, notwithstanding what I said no more than 20 minutes ago, <laughs> love's young dream does not count. What a load of nonsense. <laughs> we have to think cynically about it, this couple in this great county of Essex, the county that gave you ta Towie and Bajazzle. <laughs> and what we have here is two people, extra-jurisdictional people, coming to, our, coming to our great county, I'm from Hertfordshire, second great county, coming to our great county to get our bacon. They want, members of the jury, our pork. And what are they going to do with it? You ask. And if you don't, I do. <laughs> a moment ago. And what are they going to do with it? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. They're going to give it back to you. Well, we don't need it, do we? Because we're all around the old O'Reilly's later on. <laughs> Bacon sandwiches, chops, the whole business. We don't want their generosity, ladies and gentlemen, the jury. Because what we know is they're conning the rules. This is a couple that got married, if they did. Got married, come to this. Got married because they wanted our bacon. <laughs> not, not. I've done that before, it doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> uh, uh, not because they're in tr true love's dream, because they want pork that they're not going to use. <laughs> and, which to be fair, some of us are used to. Um, <laughs> God, are my children gone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Let's come back. Let's come back. You know I'm attached to the facts. Let's come back to the facts because what we know, and I know, no, I am actually. I, I'm no lawyer. I am a lawyer. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> no kind of lawyer, lawyer perhaps. <laughs> uh, um, but members of the jury, what we know is that. Desmond here, lovely chap that he is, never actually proposed. Did he? <laughs> Point of order, my lord. Never actually proposed. And now, if he's not proposed, are they engaged? And if they're not engaged, are they married? It's a difficult and knotty question. <laughs> <laughs> and one that's not going to be taken out of our minds by any number of artichoke tattoos <laughs> or, 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 or carrots go gosh knows where uh, and, and I don't care if you know they have substance abuse some sort of hummus or guacamole habit <laughs> <laughs> it's our bacon they want men of the jury and they shouldn't get it thank you <laughs> Mr. Bougier, put us out of our misery after that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, members of the jury, I present to you a couple who are so clearly passionate about their love and their marriage. They have based the entire uh, thing around this uh, fantastic ancient tradition in a country they are not even from. They care so deeply about uh, Great Dunmo that they have travelled 
thousands of miles across the Atlantic at a time when most of the flights are in fact cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> to take part in this quite frankly ridiculous tradition. <laughs> and if there is any slight bias against Americans, let's please remember, these are the good Americans. They own passports. Uh, I, I also would like to uh, address uh, Mr. Daniel's uh, point about uh, uh, Dublin's lack of proposal. What I would propose to you, uh, members of the jury, as someone, uh, well, in fact, all of us are the only ones on this stage under the age of 35, uh, <laughs> perhaps we should not be clouded by the uh, antiquated views by our geriatric uh, colleagues. Uh, <laughs> on what it means to be married. In fact, marriage is a very, it's a very fluid thing and doesn't need to be a man proposing to a woman or vice versa. It can just be two people who are deeply in love, who eat together, who go hungry together, waiting to eat together, <laughs> who walk together around cities and, and towns uh, and tattoo together. Uh, <laughs> this couple are so clearly uh, deserving of the bacon. Now, of course, they are not going to eat, but that is irrelevant. The bacon... Uh, is, is represent representative of uh, their love and it's uh, a benefit to Great Dunbar that we get it back. And also, if there is anyone uh, on the jury who does have a slight dislike of Americans, just remember that the best way to annoy them would be to give two vegans a load of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, our, uh, our, our lawyers' counsel for, for the bacon have been all over the place with their arguments, uh, trying to find pick holes in what is clearly a, a holeless union. Uh, they, 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 they've chopped and changed arguments more than our government has chopped and changed sex and state for education. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, uh, they, have, they spend their evenings listening to BBC Five Live. They go down rabbit holes, uh, looking at ancient British traditions. I propose to you, these are the most anglophile Americans you are ever going to find. <laughs> they have travelled all the way here from uh, America, across the Atlantic, to win uh, this, this, this bacon. I suggest, members of the jury, that as a country we've already done quite a lot to annoy Europe. Let's not piss off America as well. <laughs> so, members of the jury, it falls to me to give my third summing up to the jury. I do it in a more relaxed way. Uh, now uh, than uh, before. Uh, you've already seen what your role is to go out and make that decision. It would have been, as Mr. Clark said, it would have been ideal if this trial had been on the 9th of July 2020, if it had been exactly a year and a day uh, since this couple uh, got married. Uh, because as I said, right in the trial one, I had initially thought that you had to be married for exactly a year and a day, and it would have meant hardly anyone uh, would ever have been able to put themselves forward. And they chose, chose the actual wedding day in order to fit with that. Well, they married for three years uh, and a day. And the point that's been made is, was there a proper proposal? Well, I can reassure you, members of the jury, I can reassure you that you will not suddenly find yourself married. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen, even, even if you go to Vegas. <laughs> you, you cannot get married without there being a proposal and an engagement. Just want to reassure you uh, of that in case there's a concern that it might happen tonight with Mr. Daniels there, as Saracen said. <laughs> so what we have uh, here... Uh, is the three years and a day. We have, you might think, uh, a balanced couple, a couple that's happy. Now, I don't have an artichoke uh, a tattoo. Have we seen it? Have we seen the tattoo? Can we see it? the artichoke? Is that allowed? Is it a place that's appropriate? There we have, yes? Oh, and the swan smiling kind of <laughs> I don't have an artichoke tattoo. 
that I'm prepared to show you. <laughs> so, and I have been asked what I am wearing, a number of times, what I am wearing under my gown, uh, whether I have gone uh, naked. Good afternoon. Uh, you have the uh, <laughs> entirely thrown there in a way that I haven't been thrown for quite a while uh, <laughs> in the middle of a court hearing. Uh, that uh, you might, uh, I don't have that last check tattoo, uh, you might think that what a lovely gesture it is to have a balance there in terms of tattoos. It's not compulsory uh, if you're getting married, you don't have to have that as well, uh, but you might consider that the options there in terms of uh, the, the couple being uh, balanced, the idea of Asked, what are you going to do with the, the picture baker? There it was, pitched by Miss Nines and knocked out of the park. We'll re gift it back to the good people of Great Dumbo. The Great Dumbo thing is that you don't have to be, you don't have to live here. It's just that most people do live here because they know about the pitch and they apply for it. And the idea of searching about our country and about this town and about making that search and making the application to be here and times and to come over. And Jenny asks, will you come over? Yeah, we will. We'll come over. No, you won't. They're here. They're here from America for us. <laughs> Mr. Jury, it's over to you. I have to do my script now to make sure that I've done the right, uh, the right thing. You will now retire to consider your verdict. Usher, summon the jury keeper. Oh. Summon the jury keepers. God, they've changed. <laughs> I can't, I can't keep up with this. We now have two retired police officers. The special constable did a run. So we'll try something different now. So raise your right hand and tell me the oath. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> you give up. I just want to get. You get that? You have to this court, yeah, right? That I will. Truly, I will truly take these jurors to a safe place. Place of safety. Different. <laughs> Where, without little hindrance, little hindrance they can consider given and come to a conclusion and you'll keep them safe so they can... Have, well, in. You, you should know it. You should know it. Right. According to this ancient law. Can you speak? Or is he <laughs> <laughs> right, go. According to the ancient custom. No, it's too late now, we've done it. Okay. Take them away, please. Let's go. We can't do
Members of the jury, have you appointed a foreman? Would you remain standing, please? Members of the jury, are you agreed upon your verdict? We are not. Oh. <laughs> Been out for about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the jury, what you're saying is that it's not a verdict of you all. No, it's not. Is it a verdict of at least ten of you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a verdict of at least nine of you? <laughs> I think this is a good time to interrupt you and do the raffle. <laughs> You're lucky this afternoon we had two prizes. Oh, God. Oh, we're all right now, we're all right. Oh. Now, I'm... Stay. Oh, hang on. I'll pull another one out to start with, so that'll be easier then. There we are. Right. There are two colours this afternoon, which is confusing for everyone. This one's got an orange border to it. And the number is 257. Do, do come up. Is orange 257? Do come up and collect. Oh, those are two prizes. There's two prizes. There's another one to come. Oh, is it right? Yeah. Another one. Right. We'll just let the lady get her basket. Yes, that's well, that's right, yes, we know that. This, this one is for the lady. Where, have you done a runner? Where are you? <laughs> I don't think you should be allowed to win. Good Lord. I'll bring it down for you, my Give me a kiss. <laughs> As luck would have it, oh, this is just a, a pink ticket or beige ticket, whatever you like. And they are different colours. For convenience, again, as I did this morning, I will read it in reverse order. <laughs> All right? So you can work it out. And the number is 5, 8, 5. <laughs> <laughs> And you've got a flitch of bacon, all right? Well, sort of. Well done. Well done. Well done. Are we, we carrying on now? I think the claimants have come over from America. They've been waiting rather a long time. Oh, I think, I think perhaps we could... Uh, we've got to do the verge, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew there was something else. Oh, thank you. Right. Um, form of the jury could stand, please. How say you? For the claimants or for the donors of the bacon? Time for bacon. Oh. oh. <laughs> what have we got? <laughs> 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 
，那先生听了很。Yes, your your verdict is. <laughs> Heads or tails, Martin. Heads or tails. Heads or tails. My lord, I wonder if we can ask the jury keepers to keep them out of the alcoholic beverage <laughs> before the next trial, and we may get a proper verdict. Anyway, my lord, judgment for the claimants. Judgment. Thank you. Judgment for claimants. Now, I'm. I'm I'm very pleased to uh, uh, hear that result, and it's now my job as the judge to deliver verdicts. By the verdicts of the jury, according to ancient custom, you have been adjudged worthy to take the prescribed oath and receive the much coveted award of a whole pitch of bacon. The order of this court is it will be taken to a public place where you'll be required to take the said oath kneeling the while on pointed stones. This done, it will give me much pleasure to pass sentence on you. Pray silence for the court chaplain. Let us pray. A God who art the source of love, kindle a fire of love in our hearts. That, as our twisted fire starter, a blaze of love in our lives you may start. But, from quad bikes, moose, and electrocution, may the good Lord our souls defend, that we may receive your benediction, blessed and in love, till our lives end. Amen. <laughs> The court will retire to form solemn procession and thence proceed to the place of sentence, our ancient and respected marketplace. Mr. Usher, call our Honourable Constable of Police to be present. Call a Constable of Police. <laughs> He's done a runner. <laughs> oh. Why we have to have Pirates of Penzance, I've no idea. <laughs> In the old days, we've had proper ones. <laughs> Hold it. Do this up, please. I'm <laughs> properly dressed. Never had my office, ethics officers, did it? Constable, will you please clear the Queen's Highway and make it safe for the orderly passage of this court to our ancient marketplace? Go. <laughs> you like to follow the judge. Okay. All right, don't cool down.
I'll just get a bit of sandwich over to the store. Is that comfortable? I'm alright. You okay? <laughs> So uh, a few hours is a, a long time in Flitch history. I was here this morning when the claimants were unsuccessful. But this afternoon, both sets of claimants have been successful. First of all, call Mr. and Mrs. O'Reilly. And the tradition is to kneel on pointed stones. <laughs> the pointed stones are here. If you are prepared to kneel on pointed stones, then over to the chaplain. So Mike and Zana, you shall swear by custom of confession that you ne'er made nuptial transgression, nor since you were married man and wife by household balls or brawls or contentious <laughs> steady brawls or contentious strife, or otherwise at bed or at board offended each other in deed or word, or in a twelve month and a day repented not in thought any way, or since the parish clerk said, Amen, wished yourselves unmarried again, but continue true and in desire as when you joined hands in holy choir. And so if you agree, you say, I swear. I swear. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Since to the conditions without all fear of your own accord you do freely swear a whole flitch of bacon you shall receive and bear it hence with love and good leave. And the payments will receive a bottle of champagne a certificate for a flitch of bacon. Oh no, it's not. I'm not sure. He'll drop it. And then the final part of the ceremony involves some audience participation. It's been six years, and you'll remember at the end of this sentence, the words are, the bacon's your own. For this is our custom, 
at Dunmo well known. Though the pleasure be ours, the, bacon. the bacon's your own! I invite Mr. and Mrs. Carter, the second claimants who have been successful, to come up. All the way over from Michigan. Again, to be invited, if you will, to kneel on pointed stones. If that were me, I wouldn't be able to get up again. <laughs> so, you shall swear by custom of confession that you ne'er made nuptial transgression, nor since you were married man and wife, by household brawls or contentious strife, or otherwise at bed or at board offended each other in deed or word, or in a twelvemonth and a day repented not in thought any way, or since the parish clerk said, Amen, wished yourselves unmarried again, but continue true and in desire as when you joined hands in holy choir. And so you say, I swear. I swear. I swear. <laughs> For those of you who weren't at the, uh, at the marquee, this couple have come all the way from Michigan to participate in this flitch trial. They're also renowned for having tattoos, which is a very Essex thing. So we hope before you fly back, you might find time to have a tattoo here in Essex. But since the conditions, without all fear, of your own accord, you do freely swear, a whole flitch of bacon you shall receive, and bear it hence with love and good leave. So many congratulations. Once again, I don't have to do the it's behind me, it's now in my hand. Oh yes it is. <laughs> Now, are you ready? I'm pleased to see the hats are back on the head. I'm very pleased also you've got some work to do uh, this afternoon. Hopefully, we'll have some more work to do this evening as well. For this is our custom at Dunmo, well known. Though the pleasure be ours, the bacon's your own!